This chapter relates to a pretty young lady who was married to a petty clerk in the Office of Board of Education. She was simple, but unhappy. She suffered, feeling she is born for all luxuries. But her husband was not rich. Oh, the good Popeye. I know nothing better than that. I always think of shining silver legend dinners, marvelous dishes. One day, here is something for you. What do you suppose I want with that? But, my dearie, I thought it would make you happy. You never go out, and this is an occasion, and a fine one. Everybody wishes one, and not many are given invitations. You will see the whole official there. What do you suppose I have to wear such a thing that? Why? The dress you wear when we go to the theater. It seems pretty to me. What's the matter? What's the matter? Nothing. Only I have no dress and consequently, I can't go there. Give this card to some colleagues, whose wife is better fitted out than me. Let us see Matilda. How much would a suitable costume cost? That would serve for other occasions, very simple. I can't tell exactly. But it seems to me that 400 francs ought to cover it. I had saved 400 francs so that I might be able to go with my friends for hunting. Don't worry. Very well. I will give you 400 francs. But try to have a pretty dress. The day of the ball approached. Madame Loisel seemed sad. Her dress was ready. But she was sad. What is matter with you? You have acted strangely for two three days. I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with. I shall have such a poverty sick and look. I prefer not to go to this party. You can wear some natural flowers. In this season they look very chic. No. There is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of a rich woman. How stupid we are. Go and find your friend Madame Forestier and ask her to lend you her jewels. It's true. I had not thought of that. Next day. Welcome, Madame Loisel. Sit, please. Madame Forestier. Matter is that I have to go to a function. I want you to lend me jewel. Why not? Madame Forestier brought a large jewel case and opened it. Tis my dear. Have you nothing more? Why? Yes. Look for yourself. I do not know what will please you. Suddenly Loisel discovered a black satin box, a superb necklace of diamonds in it. Could you lend me this? Only this? Why? Yes, certainly. The day of the ball arrived. Madame Loisel was the prettiest of all. All the men noticed her, asked her name, and wanted to be presented. She danced with enthusiasm. This victory so complete and sweet to her heart. This necklace. Wait. I am going to call the cab. It was near four o'clock. In the street, they found no carriage. Finally, they found one old carriage. It took them to their apartment's door. Both entered home. I have to go office at ten o'clock. Where is the necklace? What is the matter? I have, I have, I no longer have Madame Forestier's necklace. What? How's that? It's not possible. They search the necklace, in the folds of dress, in the folds of cloak, in the pockets, everywhere. Are you sure you still had it when we left the minister's house? Yes. I felt it as we came out. 
but if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard the fall. It must be in the cab. Yes, it's possible. Did you take the number? No. And you, did you notice what it was? No. I am going over the track where we went on foot to see if I can find it. As he went, Madame remained in her evening gown, not having the force to sleep. It's nowhere. He went to the police, to cab offices, put an advertisement in the newspaper, offering a reward. But he returned in the evening, his face pale. He had found nothing. Write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace, and that you will have it repaired. That will give us time. Okay. She wrote, as her husband dictated. At the end of a week, they had lost all hope. We must replace this jewel. In the shop of Palais Royal, they found a chaplet of diamonds, which seemed exactly to be one like the one they had lost. How much does this chaplet of diamonds will cost? It will cost 40,000 francs. For you, I will give it to you for 36,000 francs. Loisel possessed 18,000 francs, which his father had left him. He borrowed the rest. He made ruinous promises, took money from users and the whole race of lenders. Then he went to get the new necklace, depositing on the merchant's counter. 36,000 francs. Go, and give this necklace to Madame Ferrasnir. You should have returned them to me sooner, or I am GHT have needed them. Madame Loisel now knew the horrible life of necessity. She did her part, however, heroically. It was necessary to pay this frightful debt. She would pay it. They sent away the maid. They changed Thai lodgings, they rented some rooms in the attic. She learned the work of kitchen. She washed dishes. She washed the soiled linen, their clothes. She took down the refuse of the street, brought up water. She clothed like a woman of the people. She went to the grocers, the butchers and the fruiterers, with her baskets on her arm. The husband worked evenings, putting the books of some merchants in order. At night he often did copying at five sous a page. This life lasted for ten years. They restored all the debt. Madame Loisel seemed old now. She had become a strong and hard woman. Her hair badly dressed, hands red, spoke in loud tone. But sometimes, when her husband was at office, she would seat herself before the window and think of that party, of that ball where she was so beautiful. How would it have been if she had not lost the necklace? How small a thing can ruin or save one? Bored of listening me? Now see the story. She is on walk. She is Madame Forestier, still young, still pretty, still attractive. Should I speak to her? Yes. Now I just paid, I will tell her. Good morning. But, Madam, I do not know you, you must be mistaken. No. I am Matilda Loisel. Oh. My poor Matilda. How have you changed? Yes, I had some hard days, since I saw you, and some miserable ones, and all because of you. Because of me? How's that? You recall the diamond necklace that you lent me to wear to the minister's ball? Yes. Very well. Well. I lost it. How's that? Since you returned it to me, I returned another to you exactly like it and it has taken us ten years to pay for it. Two can understand that it was not easy for us who have nothing. But it is finished, and I am decently content. You say you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine? Yes. You did not perceive it then? They were just alike. Oh my poor Matilda. Mine were false. They were not worth over 500 francs. What a story. 
by Gaidamopasant. Please like, share and subscribe to get more awesome videos. I have two subscribed students heaven.